Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. <laughs> what is this? Dead of Winter? Yeah. The Long Night. Now, this was kind of a surprise when they announced it because Dead of Winter came out last year to high accolades from many, many people. Many people. Um, using what was called the Crossroads Systems. And mm -hmm. I knew they were going to take the Crossroads Systems and make other games. Correct. The next one's supposed to be a space game. But this, then they announced this. I guess Dead of Winter was so popular. They had to follow it with something. This is a standalone game in Dead of Winter. So if you've never got Dead of Winter, you can get this. But it's also an expansion to the Correct. original game. They're modular expansion. They're, they're totally compatible. You can take stuff from one and mix it into the other. Correct. So because of that, we're not explaining how to play Dead of Winter here. We're just taking a look at the things that are new in this game. And we'll go over those. And if you want to know how to play Dead of Winter, check out the Miami Dice review of that. I'll put a link to it. Don't worry. Woo, that's nice of him. And so here's what's new. First, we're going to take a look at the characters in the game. Uh, yay, there's a chip now, so we can use him along with the dog. However, Blue and Melissa are the only two characters in the game that can only be used with the modules. Melissa is used with improvements, and Blue is used with Raxton. But still, they're both a lot of fun. It's great to have a, a chimp in the game, and Melissa uh, will, helps with the improvements. We also have some, like, look at these guys. Kevin Jackson and Rosa Rodriguez are zombie killing machines this guy can kill one zombie or bandit at his location period and and she can kill a zombie or bandit at, at her location again and he can kill one at any location she kills one at her location but her numbers are a little bit better than his but still just really cool we also have people who can heal we had a physical therapist and a nutritionist and at the end of your turn you can get rid of a wound token from a survivor and he can spend food to do that we also have this guy I really like him Kumar Sen, the blind public speaker, and basically whenever you're about to lose morale, he can roll a die, and on a result of four or higher, you don't lose the morale. That's huge and can make a big difference. He can only do it once per round, but still. Uh, Hugo Valentine, when, when they move, uh, basically he can ignore all exposure results except for Bitten, which is pretty neat. And so there's all sorts of really cool people. One of the things that um, you'll also notice as we go through these is just how diverse a cast. I mean, they really picked a good grouping of characters. You're going to notice all sorts of different people from all different walks of life. And it feels like real people, not necessarily uh, models who happen to show up at a zombie apocalypse. These people look like they're, you know, your neighbors and friends. And so there's all sorts of different people uh, that are included in this game. There are new decks for all the regular locations. They basically have basic stuff. There, it's, some of the stuff is different from the original game. Some of the stuff is the same. Uh, one of the things I really enjoy are all these new books that you can equip yourself with that are found at the library and school. Killing it, Chemistry, Run, Doors, Run, Yelling the Pain Away, Help Yourself, uh, Unyielding Positivity, Simple Shoplifting with Friends, Look But Don't Touch. And these different books basically or will give you special abilities when you equip them. It's kind of a funny little touch to a game that desperately needs humor sometimes. The game also comes with new Crossroads cards. There's a special pack of like really disturbing crossword, Crossroads cards you don't have to open. You can use them or not use them depending on how in, you know, intense you want your game to be. All the Crossroads cards have a little moon symbol on the bottom. And some of them have symbols on the bottom that, like this, this one here, works with the bandits. And so the different Crossroads cards, I would say about one-third work with the new modules, about this many. And the rest you can mix and use with any game. And then you also have a whole pile of different uh, events and things that can happen in crises or crises that can... And I really like the artwork on these. They're really nice. And some of these also work with the modules. Um, many of them have to do with the bandits modules. These will show at what locations bandits will show up at. Uh, but whether they work with the different modules or not, many of them don't. They're still ha they're different and new and unique crises from the original game. And then there's new cards pretty much of everything. There are new objective cards. There are new betrayal cards. There are new uh, secret cards. Quite a few secret cards. And none of these secret cards are like super... 
uh, unusual and unique. They're basically like here, for example, care. You win if the main objective has been completed. You have at least one drug card in your hand for each survivor you control, and you control at least two uh, survivors. So they're not like, oh, these are weird, funky ones. No, they're very straight, very uh, accessible objectives to do. And then there's also new exiled cards. So let's talk about what's new in this module, or the Long Night Special Rules. Here's the, some of the zombies that are included in this one. There's a new rule, basically the first player vote. If you think that somebody should not be the first player around, everyone can simply call a vote on that, and you vote thumbs up or thumbs down, and the first player token doesn't have to be passed. There's also a few new things here. For example, we have the spare tokens. These are special wounds that you can get as the game goes by. I might say put a despair token. The problem with despair tokens is you get a despair token and it's on you forever. It doesn't come off unless a card specifically says remove one despair. And there's a decent amount of cards that say that, but still, they're much harder to get rid of than regular wounds. There's also unruly helpless survivors. They can be regular survivors and you can even change them to one by giving them a medicine card. But these guys count as two survivors when it comes time to to pay food or add zombies. So there's a pain in the neck. And then, rather than having barricades, you can turn them into explosive traps. They're just like a barricade, but when you add a zombie to that space, it will also kill all the rest of the zombies. And there's a couple characters and cards that can add these explosive tracks. A lot of fun. Okay, module number one is the improvements module. You have four improvements that are placed face up next to the board, and players can use cards. For example, the new junk cards from the starter item will let you place a improvement token on one of these improvements. Uh, so you can do that, uh, and other cards will allow you to do it also if you want to. So basically you decide whether to utilize these on your turn. So this one needs two of these advancement tokens, this one only needs one, and then these will provide with some benefit. For example, the outhouse here, whenever you remove waste, you get to remove an extra two waste. In a fireplace, when you come to the colony, you get rid of frostbite wounds. You get the tool shed, and a tree stand, and a turret, yeah, turret, a treatment area. A DVD player to increase morale. So there's all sorts of improvements that will show up. And players have to determine whether they want to waste the time to get these improvements or do the other things that you need to do to win the game. The next module is the Bandit Hideout. Now the Bandit Hideout brings with it the Bandits. Now Bandits are kind of a pain in the neck. I already showed you those cards with, that will bring out a Bandit. For example, uh, this one here, The Night is Dark, will bring out a Bandit at locations 1 and 2. And so at each location where it says to bring out a bandit, bandits come, they're going to take up the spot of survivors. So the more bandits that are at a spot, the, the less survivors are going to be there. And they bring in zombies. Now you can fight them and try to kill them. They don't really get in your face, although once you add in the ba different bandit cards and the crossroads cards, occasionally the bandits will come after you and be a pain in the neck. But they're a pain in the neck for a couple reasons. One, they're going to block spots and bring in zombies. So you'll probably want to get rid of them for that reason. But also, you have your bandit hideout, and what they do is they'll take the top uh, cards from the spot that they're at, and they'll be sticking them in the bandit hideout. Now, you can go to the bandit hideout if you want to and try to get these cards. You'll see what the cards are, so you'll say, hey, man, they took something we really need, and go get it, um, and you can fight them in different spots, too. So bandits are kind of like a pain-in-your-neck addition to the game, but if you think the game's too easy, you can add them. Then we have Raxon. Oh, Raxon, this is where the government is working on stuff and they cause the problem. Now, Raxon has a, several things that it adds. First of all, you can go here and you'll want to search through this deck because in the Raxon deck, there are some of the best cards in this game. The Flare of Galadriel, a portable barrier, uh, different pills that you can find. And then there's a card that matches each pill and you can roll a die and there's a a possible positive event or negative event on each of the pills. So for a red pill, the negative effect basically, you don't for place a survivor at the colony for the remainder of the game, you cannot attack or move with a survivor. But the positive effect here, you'll reduce your search and attack values to one and a hundred to your influence value. And you get rid of all your wound and despair tokens. So this guy's like an amazing leader if it's positive. But if it's negative, he just sits there and whimpers in a corner. So there's lots of the different pills, but there's also some really good pieces of equipment, a pulse cannon, and racks and blueprints, and some good books, and this test subject, which turns you into an amazing person, or a drone. So you'll definitely want to come here. The problem is, whenever you search at Raxon, there's a, you always have to roll for exposure. But you'll also want to come to Raxon because there are these cards here. Each of these cards are test subjects that the government was working on, and you're going to want to put, like this one here needs two twos. If you put two twos on it, using action dice to put them on it, 
you can shut it down, or players can vote just to get rid of all the zombies at a location. If they do that, or you don't shut it down at the end of each turn, then you'll look here and it'll say place two screamers at random locations. And the game comes with a whole variety of new zombies. From Claw, who looks suspiciously like he's from 13th Street, um, or Elm Street, I'm sorry, and you know the Frost Walkers who escaped from Game of Thrones. But there's all sorts of these different characters, and these zombies will show up. But not only are they a regular zombie, but they will also have special abilities when you deal with them. And each back of the card, you'll turn it over. When you deal with them, you'll roll a die, and it will tell you how what happens after you get rid of that zombie. And these zombies are a real pain in the neck. Some of them are really powerful. So these new big nasty zombies are coming into the game, but that's made up for by the awesome equipment that you can get at Raxon. So you can use any of these three modules and flip them in. I should also mention that the game comes with a graveyard where you can keep dead people. This doesn't actually affect gameplay that much, except some cards might say, hey, something about the graveyard and then you just know. But this is also a nice way to show the people who have died over the course of the game. All right, that's basically all the new stuff in the game. Let's get to the final thoughts. All right, so there's more of the same stuff and I like that. It's right. interesting, it says when you mix the different decks together, you're supposed to mix them, take 20 cards out, which is really risky because you might need medicine for something and you Correct. just shuffled out the medicine cards. Yes. I think for me, I wouldn't even shuffle the other ones out because I don't know that I've ever played Dead of Winter where we totally dried out Oh, I know, though, you, uh, we have. you do search through them, though, and yes. so you're... Oh, yeah, okay, never mind. You do that. search through them, that is correct. If there's one thing I do like is all the new characters. I love having a lot of new characters, and like I said, very diverse cast. You're like, wow, they really... You can tell they put effort into... You've got more zombies now, because some people were having trouble of running out was running out of the zombie standees, having to use the little tokens... Yeah, yeah, and you know what, that brings me, I guess, to the first point is, if you don't own Dead of Winter... You might have Should you get this use... one first, or should you get the other one first? Wow, that's a lot of cash, man. To buy both of these as your first step into the game? No, 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 that's what I'm saying. So if you're only going to get one and you've never played Dead of Winter, should you get this one or the other one? This one has a lot of cool modular stuff that the other one does not have. Correct. However, I think if you don't own them at all... I think you should get the other one first, if only because you don't have to separate stuff out. Yeah. You could just throw in pretty much everything. And I think that the... Well, that's actually my only reasoning behind that. <laughs> because I was, cause the, the, the three new modules... Well, let's talk about each of the modules, okay? okay. So first we have the stuff. Uh, the enhancements or whatever they're called. Correct. The things you can build. I love this. <laughs> I love being able to build yeah. new stuff, and it's, it sounds better than it is because you're like, yeah, there's no bad effects. Yeah, there is because you're wasting time and energy and actions on and, building these things. And resources. You're wasting resources <laughs> as well. But it feels very satisfying when you get that DVD player going. <laughs> we're going to die, but we're watching a movie. Well, there's even, and I, I, I'm, there's a I'm, I'm, trying not to, I'm trying not to spoil too much, but there's even a card that specifically refers to the DVD player later on. Oh, no. Which I thought was fun. Interesting. Yeah. No, a lot of the new enhancements that you can put into your compounds are really neat uh, additions. They have like, uh, they have a, like a, a machine gun turret. nest turret. Uh, they've got f a fireplace where if you have um, uh, frostbite. I fr frostbite damage, when you come back, you can get rid of that frostbite damage you're huddling up around the fire, that kind of stuff. It's really thematic type things, uh, but really neat things that, that uh, you, you kind of think, why didn't they put this in the original game? This just seems like a Well, fits. I guess, but for me, when Sam brought that up, I don't know that I would ever play without that, and I would even bring that in for new players. It's not hard. What, the, 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 the new expand? Yeah. Of the three modules, I think I'll never not play with that one. Yeah. Because it's just that easy to jump into and add to the game. Although it, it could distract you from the goal, the ultimate goal of the game being one. Well, that's true. You but have then to be just careful. Point out people. But I'm saying the complexity is not that hard. No, absolutely not. Now, where the complexity goes up a little bit is with the bandits. The bandits add almost no positives to the game. <laughs> and they make the game a lot harder. Because at first you're like, oh, they're not really that being a pain. Next, sure, they're stealing a few cards. Let them have those cards. They're... But then the, suddenly zombies start showing up because these bandits are there. Armies of zombies. And then bandits are taking the spots that you need to get into. Exactly. And you didn't, in the last game you played, they didn't run into this, but there's a lot of Crossroads cards that, like, if there's a lot of bandits, they start doing bad things. Oh, wow. Yeah, so bandits are bad. 
Um, so I, to me, I would only use these if I was like, hey, I want a tougher challenge today. Let's show the bandits. <laughs> I think they're cool thematically. Right. And they're definitely a bit of a yell out, I think, to Walking Dead. Yes. For sure, right? More than likely. I still am surprised one of them doesn't have a bat. And, I'm still, and I'm like, still looking for, I'm still looking for, uh, for a uh, little promo set of Walking Dead. <laughs> hey, I, I don't I'm know. looking for it. I'm looking for it, Colby. Well, you, maybe, you can make it happen. Actually, I don't buddy. think they can because of licensing, but they might be able they, to. Make, uh... You can do it. <laughs> okay. Don't listen to the naysayers. So then the last section is the Raxon. The, uh, yes. The whole. The evil laboratory. chemical company. Oh, now this brings good and bad stuff. That deck has amazing things in it. <laughs> and those new zombies are horrific. Yes, they are very. And the bad. pills could be. Either <laughs> it could be right. really good or it could be really bad. It depends on a die roll. So now this is one I would not play with new players because it does add Absolutely more complexity. It gives you another location that you don't have to go to, but you might want to go to. And if you don't go to it and use dice, then those other zombies are being released. So I would, yep. I think overall, it makes the difficulty of the game go up by some. However, there are a few things you can get. Like you get that 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 flashlight or whatever it's called of. Eldritch Wand, or I forget what it's called, but like you're just going around killing zombies without having to roll exposure. That's, Are you kidding? Yeah. Like, ah! That is really cool. I'm burning you. Yeah. Or that one where you turn into an experiment and your stats suddenly shoot up. I mean, it's <laughs> really cool stuff. I would, I would say the only module that I would be okay with playing with somebody that is fresh into the game is probably the, uh, the enhancements. The uh, I agree. The compound. That's the only one. These other two, don't bring them out on your first game with somebody else, because it's just going to make the game a lot harder than it is originally, and that can be a big turnoff for somebody. But what if you're playing with people who do know the game? Would you include Raxon in? It depends on how. I, I guess you could say it depends on how recently they had played the game. If it's something like, oh, I just played last week and I remember how to play everything, sure, I think that would be all right. Um, how frequently have they played it or how often have they played it? That's, that's questions I would ask. If this is like their second game, probably not. What module's your favorite personally, though? Like if you had your choice and everyone knew what they're doing, which one would you throw in? I would probably say uh, Raxon because it gives you another place to go search. Um, other than the other the other six locations, um, so and I would zombies are just they're kind of cool. Like yeah, and you're I like I like the ones. way they look. I like the way they look. Uh, they add an, Freddy and yeah, they add another level of flavor to the game. So that's probably the one I would go to with. But that's also keeping in 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 mind that I would I would also be using the advancements or the enhancements for the compound as well. Um, I think like you said earlier, I don't think I'll ever not use that one. Um, and then interchange out the other two, but I because th I think Raxon and the Bandits together make it really really hard. Now Dead of Winter, one thing I talk about there, there's a, that little pack of cards in there that I would say are adult, very mature cards in there, right? But even yeah. without those, there's other cards, and they have, they're marks, so you know, where they have that you might want to take them out when you're playing with kids. But to me, I don't know that I would take those out playing with kids just because I wouldn't play this with kids. Right. All right. This game is there's a lot of heavy themes in it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that theming comes through the flavor. That's fine. I would say very seriously, Has kids do you let your kids watch The Walking Dead? Yeah. If you allow that, then they can handle this game. Yeah. If you think they can't handle that show, this game is that too. Right. And that's, I'm not trying to knock the game at all. I'm just saying this is there's, there's drugs, there's murder, there's having to shoot people that you thought were friends. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff in this game. Yeah. And I do appreciate that they mark the cards so that you can pull them out. Correct. But... There's that. Now, if you notice right now, <laughs> the lid's not fitting on here. That's because I don't want to squish the game because it's <clears> Sam's. And there's air in the bags. I have things bagged. And if I took out the insert, I know it would all fit. But I'll tell you this. It all ain't fitting in one box. Nope. It's not going to happen. And this, when you feel this, you're going to be like, wow, I'm getting my money's worth. Because there is a ton of components. But I think almost maybe more than the original game. Now. So box organizer people. Get now, to work. You're going to keep this, okay, because I play this with Sam if I play with it anyway, so he's going to keep this pretty good game. What do you think in this regard? Are you going to keep them separate? Yes. Or So you're not going to, like, put all the characters together? Not right now because I don't think I can fit it all in one box. 
what, so when you, you play though, will you play, let's play this version, let's play the original version, will you mix all the characters and all the cards together and mix them all? Because mixing them does dilute the crossroad cards some. Yes, it does. And it, you know, the, there's different combos, like if this character and this character in the game, well... <clears throat> I guess I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Right now, both of these sets won't fit in the same box, so it's not something that I can do. Um, so do I pull both out at the same time? Probably not. I would mix them because I just love to do that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, you do, but I don't. Um, I like have to the be chip able to. And the dog on my team. <laughs> that the was funny. Team animal. Yeah. Um, I, I just I don't know. I, I guess I'm a little bit more of a purist. Maybe you could put it that way, because um, I like to be able to extract uh, expansions from a game just on the off chance, especially if they complex the game a little bit. Just on the off chance that I'm going to be playing it next with somebody who does not yet know how to play the game. And I want to teach them the base game before doing uh, any expansions with it. So I'm not going to uh, smash them together just yet. All right. So for me, overall, this gets two thumbs up. I like the original game. This is the same thing. You're not going to suddenly like this one over the original one. Nope. If you didn't like the original one because you didn't like the semi-co-op nature and all that, it's still in this one. Um, but I do like that this game didn't up the complexity that much. It added some things. And even in the rule book, there's a couple of specific scenarios that teach you bandits and racks on mm -hmm. in like a step-by-step -step method. So you mm -hmm. can do that instead of just throwing them all the way in with some cool story. I think that there's some really neat things that happen in this too. If you have the original, you're going to want to get this because there's more stuff, right? New characters, new stories. I mean, some people are going to want to get this just for the new crossroad cards. And I, yeah. and I feel you. Yeah. Love new crossword cards. Um, so if you like the original, you'll love this. Easy. Yep. I'm seriously, I'm seriously there with that on, on that uh, aspect. If you like the original, this is a no-brainer um, because it, it, it is just that good. It is everything that the original game was and then three modules that make it a little bit better. Now, there are some people out there that are kind of hemming and hawing about the fact that they were supposed to be releasing a space theme kind of Dead of Winter type of Crossroads game, uh, but they... That's still coming. They kind of sidelined that to put this out and, oh, it's just a money grab. Well, uh, they're in the business of making board games. What do you expect? But uh, this, is, this is not some kind of chintzy little expansion that they're just throwing at you like, uh, you know, throwing a bone to a dog. This is an actual very good standalone game, and it is a very good expansion to the base game. So um, this, there's nothing chintzy or uh, cash grabby about this. This is a, a very good expansion, something that you would do well to get if you're a fan of the Dead of Winter franchise. So that is Dead of Winter, The Long Night. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Dice Tower.